Heart was released. And uh, it was grim. It shows an economy that's stalling. And uh, we remain in the midst of a — we remain in the midst of one of the worst economic and job crises in modern history. But it doesn't have to stay that way. If we act now — now, I mean now — we can begin to regain momentum and start to build back a better future. There's no time to lose. Millions of people have lost their jobs or had their hours slashed. They've lost their health insurance or are in danger of losing their health insurance. One in every six renters is behind in rent. One in four small businesses can't keep their doors open. And there's a growing gap in Black and Latino unemployment, and the gap remains much too large. And it's deeply troubling that last month's drop in overall unemployment was driven by people who were dropping out of the job market, not because more people were being hired, dropping out of the job market altogether. They've lost hope of finding a job, or they're taking full-time caregiving responsibilities as child centers remain closed and their children learn remotely. Over the past three months, 2.3 million more people are long-term unemployed, meaning for 23 weeks or more. By far the largest increase on record. This is a dire jobs report. It's a snapshot, I might remind you, up to mid-November. Before the surge in COVID cases we predicted, many predicted, and the deaths rise that we've seen in December as we head into a very dark winter ahead. For example, since October, cities are down 21,000 educators, just as schools need, schools need more help in fighting against the pandemic. A couple of days ago, I spoke with school cro a school crossing guard, a server, a restaurant owner, and a stagehand. Good people, honorable people, decent, hardworking Americans from across the country. They reminded me of my dad, who lost his job in Scranton and eventually moved our family to Delaware, just outside of Wilmington, a place called Claymont. He used to say — you've heard me say it before — Joey, I don't expect the government to solve my problems, but I expect them at least to understand my problems. The folks I'm talking about, the folks out there aren't looking for a handout. They just need help. They're in trouble through no fault of their own. Nothing they did caused them to have hours cut or lose their job or drop out of the market. But they need — they need us to understand we're in a crisis. We need to come together as a nation. We need the Congress to act and act now. If Congress and President Trump fail to act by the end of December, 12 million Americans will lose their unemployment benefits they rely on. Merry Christmas. The unemployment benefits allowing them to keep food on the table, to keep the lights on and the heat on, pay their bills. Emergency paid leave will end. The moratorium on evictions will expire. States will lose the vital tools they need to pay for COVID testing and public health. Put yourselves in that position, anybody listening. Laying awake at night wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. <clears throat> it's going to be harder for states to keep children and educators safe in schools, to try to provide assistance to keep small businesses alive. States and cities are already facing large, large budget shortfalls this year, again, through no fault of their own. They've already laid off more than a million workers, even more teachers, Firefighters, cops will lose their jobs unless the federal government steps up now. And all of this weakens our ability to control the virus if we don't step up now. Emergency paid leave reduces the spread of COVID because it allows people to stay home when they're sick. States and cities need funding to direct their COVID response, which is the only way we're going to end the economic crisis as well, only way we're going to get people back to work. I'm not alone in saying this situation is urgent. If we don't act now, the future will be very bleak. 
Americans need help, and they need it now. And they need more to come early next year. But I must tell you, I am encouraged by the bipartisan efforts in the Senate around $900 billion package for relief. It's a bipartisan effort. Congress, if, when Congress, as they work out the details of this relief package, they're going to have to focus on resources for direct public health responses to COVID-19.